Hey everybody, Flying Brian here in the Lake Conway area of South Orlando. The historical marker behind me denotes where one of Orlando's worst air disasters occurred. In March of 1972, an Air Force B-52 bomber crashed here, killing all on board and one person on the ground. Off in that direction, just one half mile south, is the Orlando International Airport, which played a key role as to why this B-52 crashed at this particular location. Longtime Orlandoans may remember that Orlando International Airport did not exist prior to the early 1960s. The airport that everybody now knows as Orlando International started life during World War II when the Army Air Corps built what was then known as the Pine Castle Army Air Base, which was strictly a military facility. After World War II came to an end, the Army Air Corps continued to utilize the airfield for military purposes only. Then, in 1947, the Air Corps was formally separated from the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force was born. The Air Force immediately got busy transforming the airfield into a Strategic Air Command, or SAC base, as Cold War concerns mounted. By the early 1950s, the Air Force was flying their new B-47 Stratojet bombers from the base. The airport was still strictly military operations. Commercial airlines were flying into Orlando Municipal Airport about seven miles north. In 1962, the Air Force struck an agreement with the city of Orlando, and thus started the joint civil and military usage of what was then called McCoy Air Force Base. By this time, the Air Force was phasing out the B-47 for the new B-52 Stratofortress. By the late 1960s, B-52s were a common sight flying in and out of the airfield. Friday morning, March 31st, 1972, was gray and rainy. In fact, it was Good Friday before Easter. A B-52D from the 306th Bombardment Wing departed and turned north. At the controls was Captain Wendell Campbell. The flight was to participate in a practice bombing exercise in either Georgia or North Carolina. Counts vary on this point. But that was not to be, because not long after takeoff, the 200 plus ton aircraft experienced an engine failure in its number seven engine. That resulted in both number seven and number eight engines being shut down as they are in the same engine pod out on the right wing. In instrument weather conditions, the aircraft turned back towards McCoy Air Force Base. From what I've read, it seems like the crew had extinguished the fire, shut down and secured the engines. Everything seemed to be going well until the aircraft got onto short final. The final moments of the flight may never be known to the public as the Air Force has still not released a definitive cause of the crash nor any details as to what occurred in the seconds before the aircraft collided with the ground. Some accounts chalk it up to the engine fire and shutdown, and they certainly did contribute to the crash. Others say it was pilot error. However, another interesting account alludes to the aircraft being instructed to go around while on short final when the control tower observed ground vehicles on the runway. In low weather, at near maximum gross weight, and with two outboard engines inoperative, a go around would certainly be ill-advised and a challenge. The details of those last few minutes are anybody's guess. What is known is the giant bomber crashed one half mile short of the airport and 380 yards right of the runway center line. This combined with eyewitness reports of the aircraft impacting wingtip first while possibly rolling over gives some credence to the go-around idea. But who knows for sure. All seven airmen perished on impact. Several people on the ground were injured as well, mainly from burns as some 40,000 gallons of jet fuel ignited in a huge fireball. Ten-year-old Anthony Ellington was severely burned and flown to a military burn center in San Antonio, Texas. Unfortunately, he died three days later. The aircraft did not directly hit any homes. Also, fortunately, the aircraft was not carrying any nuclear weapons. If it were, Orlando may have become a very different place. It impacted mere feet from a residential neighborhood and carved a 150-foot crater in the ground. More than a half dozen homes were damaged or destroyed by flying debris and the ensuing fire. To look around now, you would have no idea this horrific event took place on this very spot if it were not for this plaque. Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride, and thanks for watching.